right. Use the platform. Are you ready for this talk? Are you ready? All right. Let's do it. So hey, everyone. My name is Martin Hochel. I work as a principal engineer at Product Board in Prague, Czech Republic. I'm also GDE for web and Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is Martin underscore hotel. I publish technical articles at medium.com and I do some open source at GitHub. Last but not least, I'm also organizing the biggest JavaScript meetup in Prague. It's called NG Party. Yes, that NG stands for Next Generation Meetup JavaScript Group. And if you are into podcasts, I recently started a new initiative. It's called Tech Taboo. So check it out at Spotify or iTunes. All right. Before I start this talk, there is a disclaimer. I might be biased. What I mean by that? Well, I use various kind of libraries and stuff. So I may like some, and I may be kind of skeptical about others. So the bias is there, right? Also, you might, you, you might be asking if I'm experienced enough to talk about web components. So to give you some background, I used to be a former core member of Skate.js, which is a micro library for building web components, which is very cool. You should definitely check it out. And also, I use web components in production. So what do you think? Should I go on? Should I go on? All right. So this is the most important quote of this talk, which we will elaborate uh, in, a, in, a, in more detail. So maybe you, you heard or saw in the recent months or weeks some kind of tweets or articles with title like, web components will replace your front-end framework. That sounds intimidating, right? Like, what does it mean? I need to rewrite my app again? Oh, no. So also last year, there have been tweets like 2018, the year of web components. Ho, 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 ha, 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 ha. So it's 2019, and are web components everywhere? Well. According to chromestatus.com, 6% of all pages today use web components. So is this a lot? I don't know. Maybe it is when you take into consideration how many web pages are out there. And I don't know how they get this number, but it might be biased as well. Like everyone that is using YouTube player on its site is basically using web components because the whole YouTube is written in web components, so 6%. I don't know. So why only 6%? Maybe there is not good browser support, right? So according to caniuse.com, we see a table, and all those evergreen browsers are in green numbers. So it's very well supported, well, except if you want to support Internet Explorer, or Current Edge, or Opera Mini, who is using Opera Mini anyways, right? So we are all good. OK. To better understand why web components should even replace our frameworks and be everywhere, we need to understand why web components, what problems do they solve, right? And there is no better way how to learn than getting our hands dirty. So let's write a web component. And yes, I'm going to do live coding because nothing can go wrong, right? Whew. All right, before we start, uh, let's see what we're going to implement. We're going to implement this wc-counter custom element. By the way, the wc isn't for restroom. Uh, that's just an abbreviation for web component. It's a prefix, wc. So we will implement the counter component. We will have two buttons for increment and decrement, and we will render the current count in the middle of those two buttons. So let's uh, switch my screen to the editor. On the right side, I have my editor. On the left side, there is a web browser uh, rendering my index.html page. So 
we already have defined our WC dash counter tag. Also, we have some script tag that is including implementation of our component. So let me go there. All right. So how do you implement custom element? Use a class. So we already defined a class named counter right here, which extends a HTML element. This is how you define a custom element. Now we have some we have two methods within this implementation, constructor and connected callback. So let me unfold connected callback implementation, and we have here some console log mounted. But if I refresh my browser, I can't see anything. Why is that? Well, to make this component alive, you need to register it to a global registry. So let me do that. So I will write custom elements dot define. And now I need to provide the first argument, which is going to be the name of our new tag. So in your case, it's wc uh, dash counter. And the second argument is the reference of our counter class. All right, I press save. And we can see in the console log was mounted. So now it works. Awesome. All right. Oops, sorry about that. Uh, now. We need to implement some templates, right? Because now we are seeing anything on the screen. So how do you implement templates for uh, custom elements? Well, we need to create a variable called template. And we will assign to this variable a return value of document.createElement. And we will create a tag name called template. So now we have new instance in our template variable. And last but not least, I need to assign to inner HTML of this variable a string literal. And all I already prepared the template here, so I don't have to type it. So let's uh, copy it and use it within our template string. So what we have, we have a button with some class inc, then we have a div with class count, another button with class deck for decrementing, right? But still, there is no content because we need to instantiate this template within our component. How to do that? We need to go to constructor of our class counter, and I need to append child, so I'm invoking this dot append child with a new clone of my used template. I press save, and we can see two buttons uh, on the screen, right? Cool. What's next? Well, because we are using low level APIs, we need to do some imperative handling. So I'm creating this underscore view ref uh, property on the class, which consists of some object. And within this object, we have some properties that are querying or template via well, this dot query selector. So it's a vanilla JavaScript, right? Okay, what's next? I wanna have some interaction. So for that, I need to register some event listeners for my buttons. So I'm invoking at underscore view ref dot ink button at event listener on click. And I'm console logging in that callback ink, like increment and also the opposite for the decrement button, I'm console logging decrement. All right, let's save this. Let's try if the button works. I'm clicking on the thumbs up, so we get log ink, and on the thumbs down, we get log decrement. So that works, but I don't see that counter uh, in my view. So what needs to be done? Well, we need to render. So good practice is to render within connected callback, which is invoked when the component is physically mounted in the DOM. So again, I'm reusing the reference underscore view ref dot count view, and I'm assigning to text, no, text content some dummy value zero. I have save, and now the zero is on my screen. But nothing works. No incrementation, no documentation. So what needs to be done? Well, I need to create some internal state so how do we create state in web components? Mm -hmm. There is no state like in React, et cetera, et cetera. So for web components, we need to create getters and setters. So let me do that. So first, I'm gonna uh, create some internal property instance named underscore count, and this is gonna be the source of truth for my state, and I'm gonna assign this uh, value zero, and then I'm gonna create getter for count, and it's going to return my internal this that count, and also setter and count, which will accept the new value. And I'm going to set to my new discount that new value. Cool. And now I need to render. 
So before I go to that, let me just extract uh, the assignment of count view text content from connected callback to a new render method. And this is not part of the Web Components API. This is just my, uh, my, some, some my method that I implemented. And I need to call this to the render from within connected callback. And now, to make or stay reactive, I need to imperatively call this render with, from within or setter. Whew. That's not very nice, but uh, this is what we got. All right. Last but not least, I need to add the logic within my callback listeners. So I will uh, just increment my this.countsetter with one, and in the opposite, I will decrement it by one. Cool. Now let's try those buttons, and nothing is happening. Hmm, I know why. I need to remove this dummy zero string from countView.textContent, and I'm gonna set it to getter of this count. And because I'm using TypeScript, behind the scenes, I need to cast it to string to make it type safe. All right, so let's try to click on those buttons. Nice. So it's incrementing and decrementing. Cool. What about those buttons? They have purple background. Who is doing that? Hmm. Let me check it out. So I'm going back to index.html. And what I have here is a declaration, this is a declaration of the button with all those uh, styling properties. That's bad. I want to have my component encapsulated. How can we achieve that? Let's call the shadow DOM. So we need to create a shadow root within the constructor of our class. Let's do this. I will create some this.root property, and I will assign to this property return value of this.attach shadow and it accepts uh, a configuration of object mode, and I'm gonna use open value for that. And now, we need to do a slight change. We are not using anymore this node for rendering, so the source of truth is our shadow root, so I need to refactor this.appenchild to this.root.appenchild, and also I cannot query anymore via this.query selector, but I need to use this.root.query selector. And if I save, we can see we get rid of those tiles. So our component is now perfectly encapsulated, which is awesome. There, is, there are no leaking abstractions. All right, let's add some styles. How do we add styles? I already prepared some styles, so uh, let's copy those. And I'm gonna just create a style tag within our template. And let me just add those styles within the style tag. I press save. And we have our newly styled buttons with a gray background, nice borders, and a count value in the middle. Everything works. Nice. Let's say we want to add some theming capabilities to this component. So maybe you didn't notice, but I did, <laughs> of course. Uh, I'm using CSS variables to define background color and border radius for my button selector, right? And this is the public API for theming capabilities of my component. So I have here button-bg-color and button-border-radius. So if someone from the outside world wants to theme this component, he can do that by creating a new root selector and re reusing those CSS variables with some values. In our case, we're gonna use black background color and 50% radius. I press save, bang. I have styled my component. That's nice. All right, last thing. What about content projection? What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I want to use DOM composition. So I want to render some tag within my shadow root. In our case, we're going to use h2 tag to render a title for our wc counter. I press save. Well, the counter is not there. Oh no. Why is that? Well, because Shadow DOM is consuming it. But thankfully enough, Shadow DOM has this powerful feature called content projection. So all I need to do is to introduce a slot tag within my template. I press save, and the counter is there, the, the original H2 tag. Cool, so uh, there are many, many other, feature, many other features, but uh, I don't have time for that, so make sure to grab me after this talk.
Cool. Uh, let's go back to slides. So during this live coding, we showcased a various features of web components, like we have encapsulation, we have composition, we have themability, there are plug and play, they have zero runtime, right? There are no dependencies at all. And web components have also great interop with frameworks. On the other hand, there are some cons. And now let's talk a bit about those cons, shall we? Because not everything in web component world are rainbows and butterflies. First issue, global namespace. So as we did in the live coding, you need to invoke custom elements.define to register your element to the global registry, right? That might be an issue. Why? Well, if anyone else in this world will define some custom element with the same name as you did, your application will run into errors. So that might be an issue for some. Thankfully enough, there is a proposal from namespace registry. There is no ETA, but at least we have some proposal, so that's good. Issue number two, progressive enhancement and accessibility. So we already know how to define web component. In this case, we're using some class fancy button, which extends the HTML element, and again, we define that tag, and then we use that new wc-fancy-button within our markup, right? So this is not accessible, and it doesn't follow progressive enhancement guidelines. If I will turn off JavaScript, only thing I'm gonna see is fancy button text. And if you wanna implement accessibility, you need to do it on your own. But not all hope is lost. There is another way how to define components called customized built-in elements. So there is a slight modification how you extend your classes. In our case, we extend our fancy button with particular class, in our case, HTML button element, and then we need to provide a third argument within custom elements to define, uh, which is an object, the property extends, and then you need to name that particular tag that you want to extend. Last but not least, how you use it, you'll just write button, standard button tag in your markup with is attribute and value of this attribute needs to be the name of your new custom element that you register. Nice, so custom out, Customized building elements follow progressive enhancement guidelines and are accessible by default. That's great news indeed. Hmm. So maybe you didn't notice uh, when I showcase this table from caniuse.com, there are some remarks regarding Safari and iOS Safari, which say Safari supports autonomous custom elements, but not customized built-in elements. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Apple came to talk with you again. Yeah, so uh, Apple is not gonna implement those, so yeah, you cannot use it, unfortunately. What about developer experience? Well, as we showcased within the live coding session, it's very raw, low-level DOM APIs. And this was a very contrived example. Imagine building some more complex component, right? Handling all the rendering to be efficient, and all these callbacks. That's quite cumbersome to implement. So there is this quote from a famous guy. I don't know if you know him. Uh, he stated this uh, at the RioJS conference. I don't know this conference at all. To alter web components, you'll need a library. Remember, you will need a library. And now you might, might be asking, all right, so what's, what's your problem, man? What's the problem using a library? So there are various issues. Issue number one, you will need to learn another framework or another set of APIs, right? The second thing, there's this promise of zero runtime because use the platform, right? Well, if you use a library, you have a dependency. So basically, zero runtime is kind of oxymoron. To elaborate a little bit more, let's take a look at some numbers. Here we have 
some very like uh, popular web component libraries with some payload sizes that they come with. So we have lit HTML lit element, uh, which has also seven, almost seven kilobytes, minified gzip. Then we have haunted library, which has five kilobytes, and xtag, 6.5 kilobytes. Okay, so what? So let's consider, consider this, again, very contrived example. You have some HTML page, right? And this page is using six web components. And every of those components is using different library, right? And because web components need to be encapsulated in plug and play, they need to be bundled with those particular libraries. And if you are gonna do some math, for these six web components, we got almost 40 kilobytes JavaScript, right? That's more than React DOM. <coughs> of course, you need to add the implementation size, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, that's my main primary issue with libraries, zero runtime, it's a myth. Another issue, SVG. You cannot use web components to encapsulate parts of SVG because SVG has a separate namespace. So everything outside is ignored. Easy. If you want to learn more, uh, there is a link with a whole Twitter feed. So check it out. Another issue, forms. I mean, who is using forms, right? Anybody is using forms in the room? No? One person, too. <laughs> Come on, you're lying. All right. So again, there are, there are various issues uh, with forms and web components caused by Shadow DOM. For instance, uh, you have broken standard form submit. Thankfully enough, the folks from the standards know about this issue, and there is a huge proposal document to mitigate this issue. Again, there, there are no ETAs, but uh, hopefully it's going to be fixed soon. Last issue, server-side rendering. So there was this light at the end of the Shadow DOM tunnel called Declarative Shadow DOM. It's an awesome proposal, which will basically allow you to define all these shadow routes declaratively. And with that, server-side rendering would just work without any tooling at all. But well, this proposal was declined. Very sad, very sad. Anyways, server-side rendering is still possible. Uh, you need to build some pipeline around it with Puppeteer, or you can use SCADE uh, slash SSR library. Cool. So, as we saw, web components have pros and cons. But what I wanted to say is that all these pros and cons can be achieved today without web components, right? Even that zero runtime promise is almost possible without web components with very small libraries like Preact or Svelte, which is a compiler uh, that compiles to very efficient low-level JavaScript. So now you might be asking, dude, you are a hater, right? We should ditch web components. Absolutely not. They are here to stay as will React, Angular, Vue, and other popular frameworks. OK, the question is, should you learn web components? Absolutely, right? It's just another skill set in your toolbox. And because web components are tightly coupled to DOM, you will just expanding your knowledge about how DOM works. So let's learn it, go for it. Last question, should you use web components? Well, <laughs> that depends on your particular use case. So in my career, I found few use cases when uh, it's a good, uh, good uh, idea to use web components. So let me go through those. If you're implementing design systems and need to support teams with various frameworks, web components are excellent choice. If you just want to build plugins for WordPress or traditional server and pages, again, web components, good choice. If you're implementing micro frontends and want to have this strong encapsulation between those various apps, again, web components 
are a very viable choice. And last but not least, if you're migrating from AngularJS to Angular, also consider using web components. And if you're really gonna use web components, I recommend three ways how to implement those. Number one, the best way, just use your framework, right? Currently, Angular, Svelte, and Vue.js can compile to web components. Awesome. If you wanna go really into web components, consider using Stencil, which is a compiler that uses web components and uh, compiles to vanilla web components very, in very optimized way. And soon enough, folks from Stencil team are gonna open source that the compiler will be able to compile to uh, Angular components and React components. So that's a very powerful feature indeed. And number three, if you have the skill and the courage, just use the raw web components and vanilla JavaScript. All right, we're almost at the end. So let's recap. So at the beginning of this presentation, there was this quote, web components will replace your front-end framework, right? So I don't think so that's the truth statement. It's kind of myth. They are here, you can use them or not, but uh, you don't have to be intimidated that, oh no, since tomorrow I need to learn web components and start rewriting everything. Not at all. As I used to say, use the right tool for the right job. If you wanna use web components, go for it. If your team wants to use web components, go for it. No worries. All right, before I wrap up, let me remind you about one thing. The only change is const. And remember, respect is everything. Thanks for having me, and enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>